Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome to a new video on my channel, again about Ryzen 3000 boost clock. Again, some people might be saying I'm beating the dead cow, but still this seems to be an issue that's still existing. I just read a news on a German media website PC Games Hardware that apparently AMD added a disclaimer to the product website stating that the AMD CPUs or the Ryzen 3000 CPUs might not reach the boost clock under all conditions or they're only reaching it in nominal operation, whatever that means. Obviously it's not clearly defined in which state the CPU is re reaching the advertised single core boost. And you know when I'm doing videos, when I'm just testing my own stuff, there is always a certain risk to those testing things. I'm just testing one specific mainboard, one specific CPU and then showing you the results. But there is always the risk that for example this individual mainboard has a problem or the BIOS version or the CPU itself or there might be something I did wrong with the windows or I don't know. So there's always a certain risk when I'm testing something and then I'm experiencing something that's not cool and then I'm reporting it to you. Obviously if I find something I'm always talking um, to like other YouTubers, other reviewers, I'm talking to vendors like Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, and just checking what they experience. And for the Ryzen 3000 boost, it really still seems to be unclear what the current situation is. Some people are saying it's fine, some people are saying it's not. And in my opinion, what we should do is just test it all together. That means I will need your help. Everybody who is owning Ryzen 3000 out there and watching my videos, I will really need your help because now we all have to test and I will need your data and then we will see which CPUs are actually reaching the advertised boost clocks and if they're not reaching, what kind of boost can we really expect in reality. Before we start with the testing, please make sure that you're running the latest Windows version, run all available Windows updates. Also make sure that you're running the latest AMD chipset driver. You can find all necessary downloads in the Google form, which is linked down below. That's also where you can find the link for Cinebench R15 if you don't have it yet. And for hardware info, because those are the tools you will need to participate in this video. After you downloaded everything, after you have set up your Windows and chipset driver correctly, also make sure that you're running the system default in BIOS. Make sure you're not running any OC settings manually, like no core voltage, uh, no PBO, pre precision boost overdrive. Make sure you don't touch anything in the BIOS. Ideally, you go to the BIOS and run the optimized uh, defaults to make sure everything is running by default and we're not uh, manipulating the boost in any way. Once you did all that, once you're in Windows, you downloaded Cinebench R15 and also Hardware Info. If you run Hardware Info, make sure that you check the box of running sensors only because we don't need the additional tools of Hardware Info. Running the sensors, we go to Configure Sensor and we adjust the period where the sensors are refreshing to 500 milliseconds, so it's refreshing twice per second and also adjust the smart to 10 cycles so it's not refreshing that often. For layout, we can disable unnecessary monitoring or unnecessary sensors. For example, you can see I only enabled the clocks and only enabled the temperature, which is CPU uh, TDI down here. That's the only thing I enabled. Everything else, memory timings, you just check the monitoring down here. For example, mainboard, uh, VGA, all the SSD stuff like smart, uh, dim temperature, just make sure you disable everything that's unnecessary because we want to make sure there, there's nothing in the background that could influence the sensors or the boost in any way. Also make sure you're disabling every app that's running in the background. For example, even if it's Steam, even if it's Chrome, CPU-Z, just close everything, make sure only Hardware Info and Cinebench R15 are running. To access the single uh, core test in Cinebench R15, go to File, Advanced Benchmark, enable that and then we will have the option for the single core tests. Now there is also this option down here, the small clock you can see on Hardware Info. If you click this clock it will reset the monitoring. That's one important thing which, which we will need. So to start the measurement and testing run Cinebench single. Once it starts running reset the test again or reset the Hardware Info monitoring because we want to see the maximum boost during the benchmark. Everything else doesn't matter. I mean, if the CPU is boosting to 5 GHz in Windows Idle, nobody cares because we will need the clock under load and we want to know what kind of boost 
we can expect from those CPUs. Now we have to wait a little bit until the test is almost over and then we will be back. So far the maximum boost for my CPU was 4516 megahertz. Just wait until the test is almost over and then we will write down what the maximum boost was which we had with this specific setup or CPU. You can also run it maybe two or three times to make sure that the measurement is accurate but for me I will write down 4516 which should be 4525. Most of the CPUs are running a lower B clock than 100. They are running 99.8 multiplied with 45.25 will equal in 4525 megahertz. Now that the test is over, please open CPU-Z. What we will need is the name of your mainboard. For example, in my case, it's the X570 Aros Pro from Gigabyte. And down here in the BIOS area, you can find what kind of a GISA you're using. In my case, I'm using 1003 ABB. The ABB part is actually missing down there, but if you're not sure what kind of a GISA you're using, just check what kind of BIOS you're using. Go to the vendor website. For example, if I go to Gigabyte website and check the area of the BIOS downloads, I can find that F4i in my case is 1003 ABB. Now you go back to the Google form and simply enter what you tested. In my case, I tested the Ryzen 9 3900X, which I just marked down here. Could be, for example, for you the 3700X. Now I enter what kind of mainboard I was using. For me, it's X570 Aorus Pro. A Giza version. In my, version, in my case, it was 1003 ABB. Now you can select the maximum boost. In my case, it was uh, 4525 megahertz. You can just select whatever you tested depending on your CPU. And if you have any kind of com a comment, if you experienced a strange behavior, if you were not sure about your Agisa version, or if you just want to leave a nice comment, you can enter it down there. Then you submit and I will have your response. Please make sure that you share this. Please make sure that if you have a friend who's owning a Ryzen 3000, please also ask him to run this test. The more data we can collect, the better. I think if we manage maybe get over 100 or even a thousand results, that would be amazing because then we can, for example, compare main boards with specific Agisa versions with specific CPUs and check what kind of boost is really expected. In reality, maybe the majority even hits the advertised boost clock and maybe my testing is just for some reason wrong so yeah that would be really amazing if you can participate and help me out with this google form and the ryzen boost clock survey thank you so much for participating thank you so much for helping out in this case see you soon